Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky, your host, Damien, and your host, CJ. We are back in the building. Absolutely excited for this week. I feel like I feel like Christmas, you know, is either late or it came early, depending on how you look at it, because John Jones is back in the building. And it's been three years, like almost to the day, it's been three years. Uh, and like fight week, you know, all we can do is hope that everybody stays healthy. Like, so far, the card has, like, you know, it's been good. We're supposed to have Dan Hooker on it. But, you know, John Jones is here. How are you guys feeling about it? Go ahead, Damian. I'm excited to see him. I'm excited to see him back. It's been too long. And we know that, we know that the John Jones fans be some of the wildest. They be riding and dying for your boy. So for him to come back, I already know there's going to be a bunch of chirping out there talking about, oh, this man's about to just walk through Cyril Gong. I'm excited for it. I'm here for it. His debut, like you said, three years later, going up to heavyweight versus Cyril Gong, that's not an easy time. So right off the bat, I respect him for for taking the journey up, you know, and 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 challenging your boy, because I feel like Cyril Gong won't take this. You think so? Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be an upset of the century. Yeah, well, we're going to definitely get into, you know, all of that. What about you, CJ? Yeah, I, I'm really excited as a fight fan. Just the skill level and seeing these two guys go at it, I think the fans are in it for a treat. If you pick one side or the other, I'm not mad at you at all. Like, I'm still wavering going up and down how my thought process is going. I've been going back, watching little fights here and there. But as a fan, I think the people are in it as a treat like back-to-back uh main event cards this is going to be two high level guys and they're big guys going at it and i was talking to people on tiktok and i'm like i think this is probably the best the heavyweights are going to start looking now uh it's a new time oh look this just came to my head john jones is kind of changing how the 205ers started to look and now you know cyril gone and him are changing how the heavyweights are starting to look so i'm excited it's going to be high level for the big guys you know that can move in and out who can strike who can do it all so we're in for a treat y'all yeah and also to hit off of what you said um yeah you know we're gonna start seeing more skilled heavyweights Mm -hmm. which typically you just see big heavyweights that are throwing blows but like Mm -hmm. there's really no craft and skill to it you know you have uh, Tom Aspinall, who's yeah. out injured right now, but like even the way that he moves, like he uses a lot of footwork. You know, he's nice on the ground, like just well rounded. Like when we get to a point to where heavyweights are r- well rounded mixed martial artists, <laughs> that's yeah. a scary. That's like that's just I, I I can't wait for that. So yeah, um, definitely um excited for that. But then just taking a quick look back at last week. Um, the main event fell out the day of Krylov versus yeah. Ryan Span. Um, so sucks for Ryan Span. Um, but Andre Muniz versus Brendan Allen had to end up being the main event. Of course, they kept it as a third, as a three rounder, because you know it's not fair for them to have to Super go two extra notice. rounds. Mm-hmm. I was shocked that Andre Muniz lost. I'm not gonna, and got tapped out. Like, he's won all his fights by submission. This was his first loss in the UFC. Um, and against Brendan Allen, Brendan Allen really made a statement here. And I think he went into it like an underdog and, and got it done and tapped out the black belt. Like, Yeah. When you and it goes, tank went out. <laughs> yeah. And it goes back to what CJ always says, which is, like, you don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen in these fights. Sometimes you go inside the fights and you think, One thing's going to happen is just completely different. Like, we really don't know. Like, I'm really starting to, like, get that in my (laughs) mind. That Like, we don't know anything. (laughs) Yeah. That's why this sport is so great. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like playing basketball or playing football, you know, when the team is just dominating, just going to run through a team. It's like, you're in a fight, you know? It's fight or flight. (laughs) Anything can happen at any point in time. So, you know, everybody's a scientist and we doing this and we're talking about it right now. And I'm online all the time and people are talking. It's like, let's slow it down a little bit, guys. Let it play out a little bit. And it's fun to talk about it. Don't get it wrong. It's fun to talk about it. But like we said, you know, case in point, Brandon Allen, he just went in there, did his job. And guess what? He's elevated now. 
Yep. Now he's in the top 15. Of course, Tatiana Suarez is back. Yeah. Oh, before we move on to that, I want to apologize to Tatiana last week. I fucked around and gave her a whole baby. I don't know where I heard that from. So, Tatiana, <laughs> if you ever hear this, I'm fucking sorry, baby girl. I am sorry. But shout out to you. You did amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you said that last week, I was like, oh, she got a, she had a baby. I, mean, that's I don't okay. know where the like, hell I heard that from. It's my fault for not double checking and triple checking. That's how you know I'm just a regular ass fan. Don't kill me. Hey. And if you do, I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you think I really let you kill me, John? <laughs> uh, I love that back and forth. Uh, and then let's see. Of course, uh, Jordan Levitt, the twerk god, is back. The twerk god <laughs> with, the, with the with the um, what's it what's it called? What did he do at the end? Um, dirty the dancing. Yeah, he did twerking. Yeah, but he did the, the little dirty dancing thing. Oh, the um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> like, like, and then afterwards, the post fight man's got his feet up on the table. He's Chilling, sit back, talking shit. Yeah. See, but Scott, you know, that's one of the things we talk about. He's yeah. somebody that people are going to talk about it, love it or hate it, or how you feel about it. You're talking about him. He does things to make people talk about him and to yes. check in for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's yes. a likable guy. He's the, the shit, bro. Like I said, don't knock me out and then twerk around me, bro. But <laughs> shout out to that young man, bro. Hell yeah. That's how you yeah. go out there and, and win. Yeah. I, to piggyback off that, he he is in a in a group with uh, Chris Barnett with me because Chris Barnett, mm-hmm. whenever whenever he wears that fool, be acting a fool, and it, yes. it was hilarious, and you love to see it because it's just them like showing out because they realize like you know this is for the fans, honestly. Overall, like that's what the fight game is about. Yeah, you want to win. Yeah, you want to prove your dominance and everything, but you also want to entertain, mm-hmm. right? So. You know, whenever they're winning or losing, I'm tuning in because I'm like, oh, if this fool wins, he going to twerk. Oh, mm-hmm. if this fool wins, <laughs> he going to do a front flip into the splits or some crazy stuff. You know what I right. mean? So I appreciate them for that. And yeah, I, I, I like watching these guys. Yeah. And I, that also goes to show is that you don't have to be a super tough guy to be a highly skilled right. fighter and to be a an asshole or be a dick. You can be likable, lovable, and a right. friendly dude and still whip some ass at the same right. time. Right. And when you whoop an is... ass, we respect you more. We're like, mm-hmm. oh shit, he was talking all silly. We're out here knocking niggas out. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Facts. Um, and then, of course, my guy, Ode Osborne, uh, gets it done with a split decision against Charles Johnson. Um, the the kick to the boss. Yeah, mm-hmm. it took him hey, out. Hey, listen, more fighters need to take the full five minutes. Yeah. Some of y'all really need to take the full five minutes and like stop being like, oh no, I'm okay. Like if you think about Jamie Pickett's last fight, and Jamie Pickett is actually going to be on his next upcoming card, oh, but in yeah. his last fight, he got kicked. He got kicked in the balls. Didn't take the full five minutes. Tried to come back early, and then got finished. Like literally, like thirty mm-hmm. seconds after that, oh boy, got on him. Um, you know, so like take your time. Stop just hopping back in there, um, because a lot of times like they're severely compromised. Um, but you know, it was a solid card. It, it, if I felt like it went by pretty fast, um, yeah. But it was fun and, to watch. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, Tatiana Suarez says that she's going back down to one fifteen. That's um, scary. She yeah, gonna, she gonna bully them girls down there. Yeah, who who's gonna stop her? She's so she's so big in her size. Yeah. Her yeah, she's gonna be a problem. Yeah. So that's exciting, but. Let's get into what we're really here for, UFC 285. You know, mm. we are just, we're just getting spoiled. We just getting, yeah. and we deserve it. As fans, we, we deserve it. Because, like, the next month and a half, like, I was talking to Jay's, who's not here. Ugh. But, like, the next month and a half is crazy. Like, let's just real quick look at the lineup that's coming up. Because, like, it's nothing but bangers, including... The fight nights. And for the people who don't like Apex cards or cards that are in the Apex, these aren't going to be in the Apex for the next month and a half. So you oh, have, nice. of course, this weekend, John Jones versus Gone. Next mm. up, Jan versus Marab. Here in Vegas, they're doing it at the theater at the Virgin Hotel, which that'll be super interesting. Um, and then right after that, so two weeks from now, we have another pay-per-view, Usman versus mm. Leon. Like, that card is already looking Gaethje's on there. Like, like mm-hmm. that's going to be ridiculous. And then right after that, 
Vera versus Sanhagen, Bantamweight. Mm. Come on now. Like that card, there, mm. there's no stopping it. That card is going to be absolutely amazing. I didn't even oh, realize that Holly, Holly Holmes. Alex, Alex Casares? Yes. Holly's making her comeback. I think she's been out for like the last two, three years. Um, so Really? Yeah. It's been that long? Yeah, it has. She got hurt. And then uh, she's just been like rehabbing her, her uh, knees and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like it has not been that long for some reason, man. I'm lying. That's scary. Yeah, I remember her last fight. She got robbed, though. I remember watching that and being like, how the hell did it, that didn't go to Holly? But then uh, after versus that... Ketlin versus Ketlin. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 And then right after that, we got Izzy versus Alex, too. Let's yeah, go. I'm absolutely excited. And then oh after goodness. that... Oh, my goodness. Like, like, now we already out of... Now we already out of March. We're now in April. Max Holloway versus uh, Arnold Allen. Like what? And Where's then we that come fight back. At? That fight's in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. That's right. I always ask you that. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> the tickets are cheap. The tickets are so cheap. Like I wish that I could go to uh, Missouri during that time. Like the like the cheapest tickets started at like seventy five dollars, and like the note like to sit on the floor is at like two twenty five or two twenty something like that. What? Uh, Oh yeah. damn! Yeah, so they want to get a the trip out to KC. Mo. when is that? Uh, April fifteenth. Are you gonna go, oh, Scott? Winter, uh, winter honeymoon, or are y'all having right. a honeymoon? Yeah, we're on honeymoon. The the wedding is April eighth. Yeah, honeymoon is April tenth. So probably won't be catching that one. Listen, y'all. This is how y'all know that I care about Damien because his wedding is on April eighth, the same day. Alex versus Adesanya. And if y'all have not looked at UFC 287, the card is stupid. It's Damn. like, it's the best, it's stacked. So, like, this has to be the best card of the year. Like, if it gets better than this, then, like, we're in for a great year. But, um, yeah, so the next month and a half is super exciting. Um, But let's get into it. Like, let, let, let's start at the bottom because we started at the top. Like, we're we going to get caught up there too fast. Let's just quickly take a look at, like, the fighters that are coming up um on this lower um on the early prelims right so mm -hmm. they haven't these pictures will probably be loaded in like thursday or wednesday um this guy farid basharat uh there should be a dana white contender series next level coming out on him on youtube it'll probably be out tomorrow if not thursday um mm -hmm. he's a contender series alumni uh he also has a brother that's in the ufc so this is another pair of brothers that's in here and he's oh, super yeah. slick. Um, yeah. Yeah. He he he's pretty good. And then uh Tabitha Ricci. I know a lot of people like her. Like yeah. they feel the same way about her that they as they feel about um Brian Ortega's ex girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's fighting a vet though, Jessica Penne. She's fighting yeah. a vet. Yeah. And this Cameron dude. I seen him when he like in Vegas uh, on the same card, the the card that was in December. Um, he made his debut, and he was actually pretty good. However, he did like foul the dude, and then ended up uh, getting the finish at the very end. But I'm excited to see Aaron Gary. I don't know if you guys uh, watch yeah, Aaron Gary. He's pretty yeah, cool. they like got him down. Gary. Yeah, I, I like him too. I'm excited. Like you know, can he get it done again? They got him as a big favorite, a minus six seventy five favorite. favorite. Yeah. yeah, so. It'd be cool to see it. I like his. I like his style. Um, Julian Marquez, y'all know him. Y'all know Marquez. Yeah, he got one of the best Actually, names, no. the Cuban no. Missile Crisis. No, no, That's no. His... I I know Julian. I love his beard, and he was the yeah. one that like shouted out to um, what's her name, Miley, Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. Yeah, she responded back. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Julian beat up my. Uh, he came <laughs> back and beat up my boy uh, Maki Patolo, and then Maki got cut from the UFC. So. I'm so sad about that because I love my Man, this you card know. is so fire. <laughs> like, look at it. Um, Amanda Rivas is fighting. Amanda Rujo. She's fighting. Derek Brunson. I mean, are we excited about that? No, but we are excited about Duplessy. I love mm -hmm. saying his name. I like his name. <laughs> the S is in silent. <laughs> um... Yeah, the prelims and and then we got Cody Garbrandt. And as soon as man, I seen this, I'm man. just like, listen, if Trevin Jones knocks out Cody mm -mm. Garbrandt, mm -mm. please, that's a wrap. Please let him go. Like, that's a wrap. He has to be stopped because he's not going to stop himself. I was looking at his record after he oh. beat after he beat um Cruz Dominic. for the 
That yeah. was it. That was that, it. That was, that was it. the like highlight he, of his career. Period. Period. It was down. It was all downhill from there. Like you know who I'm going to bad sure. in a bad yeah. way too. Not like <laughs> I lost on points. Oh, I no. got robbed. No. Oh, that's not good. I don't understand it either because he and that Dominic Cruz by that man was looking like a goat. He was untouchable. He was Dominic mm-hmm. Cruz and Dominic Cruz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and he's so young. He's 31, but his chin is gone. Yeah, it's it's gone. gone. Um, and once the chin's gone, like like it's a wrap. I would have really preferred to see him like just really just take off two, three years, spend time with your family, with your kids. You can still be training and stuff, but like get into something else and then maybe try to come back. Maybe then, you know, the chin is tougher. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that if Cody Garbrink loses this, he's going to be released just like Darren Till. Ooh. He yep, just got Darren released. Darren Till, I've seen that. Listen. I saw the photo that a lot of these people have been using as the photo for Darren Till, too. And this <laughs> last fight, looking all beat yeah. up on the ground. I'm like, yeah. Don't disrespect him like that. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is that, like I said on this podcast, I am at the point to where, excuse me, I'm at the point to where, like, I wanted Darren Till to leave. Go to PFL. Go to Bill, like, go preferably PFL because you have the chance to win the million. But, like, go somewhere and build yourself back up. Go fight some other fighters. Go make some money. Like, you're coming from the UFC, so you're going to get bigger, uh, you know, you're going to get a bigger purse just because you were on the UFC. He has a pretty good name. He has a fan base. But, like, he needs to, like, go do something else. Like, go rack up mm-hmm. some wins somewhere. But, like, get up out of here. <laughs> so bad. Cause I feel you like ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> he got talent, but, like, all he's just been on a downtrend, too. I don't get it. Yeah. Yep, yep. I don't get it. I guess everybody is just getting... So elite or chewing up the charts yeah. so quick, like, bro, and the people that we thought were elite can't hang anymore. That's exactly what it is. I think, uh, Damien, like you and I had even talked about it before. Where we were like, is it that like these hype trains are like, like, did we hype them up or did they just get to a level to where like there's really levels to this and you're not at that level? You know what I mean? Because like Darren Till was super promising. Like, even when you seen him lose to Woodley. You know, you're mm-hmm. kind of just like, okay, maybe he'll be able to come back. He never was able to really, like, mm-hmm. come back. And it's like, I think we're putting these ideas of, like, how good we think these fighters are. But the reality is, is that, like, he's not him. Yeah. He's they not. Get, they, they get pushed real fast. Real you know, a couple A couple good wins here mm-hmm. and there, and then they try to skyrocket them. And like you were saying, there's levels to this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you jump from, you know, being unranked and that getting into that 15 and then going into that top 10, it's, it's crazy those dudes are killers in that in those uh in those rankings it's and not the same I, I respect people like sean o'malley people were shooting on him talking about oh they feeding them cam they feeding them cam yada 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 but i'm like hey man like sometimes you want to take that experience even though they're not that great each person is a level higher than the person that they were previous mm-hmm. and you're starting to get that experience and then all of a sudden you get that number two shot and now look at you you know what I mean? Like, you, you work your way up. Oh, but now that he's up there, it's, it's scary, so. <laughs> once you're up there, you can't go back down. Wow. Like, once you go up and you start going back down, it's very few people who get knocked off and then are able to come back up, you know? Um. So, yeah, once you enter that top 15, top 5, top, like, you're stuck there unless you start getting beat the hell up. And like you said, there are killers up there who are ready mm-hmm. to take your head off, like, yeah. like Nobody's ready. up there playing. No, yeah, ready to die for what's there. Period. Uh, we got Bo Nickel making his UFC debut. The um, wrestling phenom against Jamie Pickett. I, I know, you know, it's no longer Black History Month, CJ. You know who I'm going for. But <laughs> CJ, it's not Black History Month anymore. Hey, hey, hey. I can't change it, baby. You already know. <laughs> I can't change it. You know oh, who I'm going for. Real- I'm pulling. Hey, I'm super excited to see Bo, though. Go ahead, Sky. I'm sorry. Yeah, real quick. It, it was nothing but L's for us, Black History Month. <laughs> we we we're gonna be back next year, but it was nothing but hell. We had uh, a loser yeah. record. I didn't really know how to score O'Day versus Charles as far. That was a win-win. 
And that's what I said. I was like, you know what? We're just going to take the win. We're not going to win. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so I think it ended up being like a, a, like Black Fighters during the month of Black History Month. I think the last one I had told uh, CJ was like three to six or something like that. I think we mm. only got like two extra fights after that because Dante Mays lost. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it was a rough week. I mean, it was a rough month. You know, we only get 28 <laughs> days. Like, I, yeah. man, and we couldn't get it done. So now, you know, we we in March. We're going to leave February where it's at. And I'm going to tell you right now, but it's going to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see him, but hey, I rolling with thinking. Uh, it don't, like uh, I said, it don't be my predictions. That's who I'm rooting for. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like you, said, for. like you said, we don't know what's going to happen. Hell no. Nah. No idea. Because the thing is, experience is a thing. What's yeah. Bo Nickel? 3-0. and oh. But Bo Nickel's a dog. He, he's explosive. And the thing is, he got a little bit of yeah. hands, too. He has yeah. a little bit of hands. Which can set up that wrestling for him perfectly, mm-hmm. if need be. Right. Right. Um, that's, that's a banger of a card. So we already starting a pay-per-view card off mm-hmm. with with uh with the banger with a much anticipated fight next up we got matisse gamrod versus jalen turner it was supposed to be dan hooker but this is a much better situation for jalen turner since he's fighting number seven um mm-hmm. instead of hooker was who, who was behind him how y'all feel about this like i love jalen turner ask me who i'm going for <laughs> jalen turner baby the tarantula <laughs> Who did Gamera fight last? I remember Benny, uh, Benny the uh, Butcher. Benny the Butcher. Wrapped <laughs> him with that like, right hand. Wrapped him. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Like Benny says. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great fight, though. Benny the Butcher. Yeah, and uh, right. I just gave man's a whole nickname. That's not even his nickname. But that fight was a great, a great fight. That grappling was amazing. Yeah, but I'm still yes. running with Jalen Turner. Don't at me. At your mama. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Jalen, too, just because, you know, he's such. I, I like Jalen. I like the fact that like he's um not one dimensional. I like his jujitsu. Yeah. He's tall and lengthy. Yeah, he has a lot of space. So Gamrod is really gonna have to get on the inside. work on getting on the inside mm-hmm. to even be able to touch him. You know, uh, I just looked at the height. Uh, Gamrod's five eight and Turner six two. Yeah, Damn. so that's gonna be interesting. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And then they have he has a seven inch advantage over Gamrod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. And, yeah. But Gamrod, hey, but Gamrod is savage though. He is. Yeah. He's slick. So, like, yeah, like you were saying, those wrestling transitions and stuff, like it was, it was really rolling. That, that <laughs> yeah, was entertaining. Was. Like that's yes, what, it was. When I people on the, when I see people on the ground, that's what I want to see. Yeah, like, that was exciting. Mm-hmm. So shit, for that reason, like they're like he's gonna try to, but but Jalen is so long and lanky. Mm-hmm. He could throw in triangles. He could. Yeah. Damn, that's a, that's a tough one. He got Brad yeah, Riddell out of there Jamie. real fast. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with the transfer. And who who do you got for the first ones? We're going to keep track of the main of the main card. So he got Bo or Jamie Pickett? I'm, I'm going I'm to go Bo. Okay. So me and you are going Bo. Uh, CJ's <laughs> going Pickett. Hey. Here, we're all my going whole car to be fuck. Hey, my whole car be fucked. <laughs> but I take it though, baby. Your whole car is mine. <laughs> hey, I let people stuff. know my bias is shit. I don't care. Me too. Me too. I'm like I'm biased as hell. Like I'm hell not giving yeah. you an unbiased opinion. I don't mm-hmm. care. For real though, <laughs> see it. I'm not a politician. Um. Yeah, but but if I'm being honest, like Gamrock can't get it done. It, that's gonna be a really good fight. Like it's flying under the radar, but that's gonna be a really good fight. But I'm still gonna rock with Jalen. Uh, okay. And then I told you I'm not calling him Jeff. I'm calling him G-Off because that's his name. <laughs> it's G-Off. Yeah. It's G-Off Neil and <laughs> Stavkop uh, Romanov, uh, the phenom that nobody's talking about, the Hamzat that nobody oh cares about. God. Like, nobody Wait, talking be about this man. Mm, oh, do he? he's a guy. He's 16 oh, and yeah? 0. He's, he's enough Russian. Oh, damn. And he got hands. And I feel like I haven't seen him. If I no, did. he's from he's from uh, Kyrgyzstan. Is that Russian? I don't know. Don't I'm not a. It used to be G. Russia, but then like they they broke off and I'm so not on. A and geology so forth. major. So look yeah, at this. This is crazy. I just I looked like at Jeff the heights. Neal. Jeff Neal five nine. Uh, Shavkat six one, and he can go too. Yeah. Damn. But guess oh. what? Guess who I'm going for, people? 
<laughs> you know, I like. Hey, like Jeff Neal got Neal boxing fight. though. Jeff Neal he, boxing is swift. He got, he crisp. He got good. He got good kickboxing. He got good like yeah. Muay Thai type skill. Yeah. He got Luke up out of there. And I, you know, I like watching him. He's being coached by my favorite coach. Like I keep saying, Safe Saud out of uh, Fortis MMA. Uh, but I'm not stupid. Shafkat gonna get that man out of there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't. Matter. I don't gotta. <laughs> Yeah, I don't got a lot of ass too. I think he's yeah. ass. Yeah, you know because right but, now, but I know the wrestlers be dominating. But so he's Damian, that guy. He, he got he got Jeff Neal up out of there like fast, fast. So just oh, you're put that about in Neil Magny. Neil Magny. Neil Magny. Neil Magny. I'll, them fools' names be getting me all the time. Neil Magny. Yeah. Jeff They're both Neal. journeymen in that little area. Mm-hmm. I don't know <laughs> who the hell I meant. And them fools fought each other. It was a battle of the Neils. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I think, you know, this is a, I, I'm hoping that like Shafkat takes his moment right now. He's ranked number nine. He's fighting number seven. Mm. He needs to take this time. Like when they, when, if he wins afterwards to get up there and make a statement, like, hey, call out Hamza. Let them know that like, listen, there's another Russian in here. I'm 16 and all. I got more wins, more experience than Hamza. Like, ain't nobody talking about me. Like, hey, you know, let your nuts hang or something. But like, he can't just go inside there and not and say quiet. anything mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, I'll give whatever they take. Like, no, like, because 170 is getting thick yeah. at the top. Like, it's time for people to start fighting. You know what I mean? So if someone, if someone's O has to go, like, if he has to fight Hamzat, that would be exciting. But, like, he's got to make some noise. If Jeff Neal wins, oh, boy, that's going to be enough said right there. Like, that would be crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I, I I know CJ going for G off. <laughs> I'm going I'm going for him too. I'm going for him. Are you okay? He go away. Hey, he could crack him. I'm he could crack him, but it ain't likely. But you know, shout out to brother Jeff. Let's go, baby. We can <laughs> we can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Shock the uh, world, baby. Yeah, I'm going with Shop uh, <laughs> And then let's go ahead and get into it. Uh. Ooh. Valentina Shevchenko like versus them. Alexa Grasso. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm Let's super go. excited. I'm super Let's excited. Go. You know, I'm kind of upset about me and my girl. We've been watching the Embedded. They haven't been showing Grasso at all during the Embedded. I want to see what she's got going on. The first Embedded, they only showed Jones no. and, and Gone. Yeah. Mm. I haven't seen today's Embedded. I've been busy. but um, They showed a little bit of Shevchenko. Did a they? little bit, yeah. Ooh. She was looking good. Yeah. Um, Talking shit too. <laughs> what? Oh, I gotta check it out. You know that that's the the confidence on Shevchenko is what I love. Like when they had asked her, like like a couple fights back at the end of it, she was like, "You're looking for weakness. You can stop. There is none. <laughs> there is none. You won't find it." You know, she was really talking like, "Oh, like soon." She's like, "All of them. They're like little dogs. All they do is just bark, bark, bark." But once they get on there, like, it's a different story. And I'm like, damn, she, she ain't lying. Yeah, she said that on uh, Ariel. She was talking yeah. about Blanchfield and all, all those new girls. They're like, there's, they're like little puppies. They get excited because, you know, they're yeah. coming up. To, so they want to get in here. And there's like, you know, you coming with the big dog now. Yeah. You know, it's something new. I'm a vet. You know, I'm kind of sad that everybody's kind of, you know, you know, you know me. Everybody's kind of discredited in her, like you know, one bad fight just throws your whole resume out the out the window. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all it's gotta chill, familiar. and please go back and watch some of her fights and just look at the eye test and see how she moves and see how she fights. Look at her fucking training. I love watching her train because it's like it's it's level. Like we were talking about, it's levels, and sh- and she has those levels. Yeah, she, she reminds me of of Fazee, Fazee's. Mm-hmm. Her, his, with his kickboxing yeah yeah, yeah. it is like Muay Thai and kickboxing I think they both train at Tiger Muay Thai too so yeah maybe that's why but, and Peter Young oh, mm-hmm. yeah and Peter Young yeah they all they all like resemble each other mm-hmm. you know, like when I be seeing her like kickboxing and stuff I'm like damn like she look like she could hang with one of them you know yeah yeah and the only thing that I'm sad about is I remember the first fight I seen Alexa Grasso in I was like who the fuck is that because the boxing was crispy. crispy. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was piecing old girl up. And I was like, hey, I got to keep my eye out on her. And so I'm really excited and happy to for her to have this opportunity. Because yeah. I like her. Like, she's a fighter. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I just, I, I can't go 
even though, you know, you know how I feel about the Valentina's last fight, but I'm also not stupid. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes people, like, there's a whole bunch of factors that go into it. Styles make fights, and I just don't see, I think Alexa's just going to be too small for Valentina. And I, I just don't see a path to victory for Alexa, unfortunately. Like, it would be cool if she won. Like, that would be shocking. But I just think Valentina's going to go inside there, like, probably have her best performance, like, just style on her. Yeah, she they're, be they're the, the same size. They're 5'4", five, 5'4", four, five, four, same weight, you know, but. Yeah, but the body makeup is different. Yeah, uh -huh. The body. You know why you yeah. might say that, too? Because Grasso got, like, a little girl face. Her face looks, like, real young and smallish, you know. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, like, I'm torn. Like, it's like I was talking last week. Um. I'm sorry, guys. I don't do all this predicting this shit, but it's a win-win for me. Like, I love Little Grasso, you know? I'm fucking half Mexican, so if she wins, that's three Mexican champs that will be around. And mm -hmm. I love, love, love me some Valentina. People are trying to throw her out the, out the way because, you know, she didn't look like a superhero in her last yeah. fight. You know, players fuck up sometimes. She wasn't yeah, at her okay. best, and it's okay. But Please don't discredit her and please go back and watch some of her old fights because she is a dog for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah you got Damien, what she, you think? She, yeah, she, yeah, she's one of my favorite, like, overall fighters to watch. Anytime Max. I see Chef Panko, I'm tuning in because I already know what it's going to be. And yeah, maybe in her last fight, she didn't, she wasn't 100%. She didn't really show up, but it was still an entertaining fight. I still enjoyed it. And in this one, oh, I, I feel like people look at your last fight if you didn't do well and they just like judge you on that move forward yeah. and they end up forgetting. But the, these are the times where you show like, no, like I really am that I'm her. You know what I mean? She's right. going here, possibly <laughs> put a beating on old girl and then be like, yeah, just say, just, just a reminder, y'all thought she could hang up here with the big dog, but it ain't like that because I'm, I'm Valentina. I'm the bullet. <laughs> I love, I love Valentina. She's one of my favorite fighters of all time, man. Like, I can't wait for period. This. Like, period. You know what period. I'm saying? Men, because women, she's whatever else is out there. Oh, mm -hmm. super well rounded. Like, yeah, don't you don't want to get caught in her Muay Thai clinch or something like that? But no. it, <laughs> but if you do. You better pray she doesn't sweep you to the floor or hip toss you or something, man. She on top of you now. Cause she knows she's going to throw you in that crucifix and you're going to be wishing oh, like, oh my God. I, I just want to tap out at this point. <laughs> I'll be watching you, them in the crucifix. i like, man, I know it's not a submission, but just tap out. Cause like, yeah. Cause once you get to... there, you can't really do nothing, man. It's, it's vicious it's down, devastate. down there. Devastate. Her elbows just raining on you like they're jabs. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, you don't want to, I, that's a worst nightmare. You know what I mean? You don't want to catch yourself on a Valentina Shevchenko crucifix. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Right. Ever. That's and crucifix, that's my favorite. Like, when yeah. I see, like, when uh, DC, who did he do that to? Oh, when DC got, I can't even remember right now. Oh, I watched so many uh, fights. Yeah, I, I remember. Was it Stefan Struth? It was one of them. Put them in his put them in that crucifix and from that moment on anytime I see a crucifix like that's my absolute favorite because you're so helpless like yeah. you're just so helpless like, it's such a it's such a older sibling moment like when you were a little kid your older sibling just beating you up and there was nothing you could do about mm -hmm. it like it's my uncle yeah, exactly exactly one of those moments um yeah so like I said I, I, I'm going for Valentina but I would not be upset if Grasso won. I wouldn't be upset just because, like, I like her and, you know, Viva La Mexico. They'll have to go to Mexico in, like, September yeah. or whatever. So that'd They'll be cool. Yeah. What about yeah, you, man? Who you leaning towards? Oh, I think Valentina I, I think Valentina takes this. Although, like like y'all said, I would not be upset either way. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like we spoiled with this one. <laughs> yeah. For real. And I... I I'm going for Valentina. I'm going for Grasso. I'm more high on Valentina because, like I said last week, I I, I love seeing greatness. And I want to mm -hmm. see as far as she can go. I want to see the win streak keep going. I want to see her break records until another girl can come and mm -hmm. take it or she bows out and walks away or she steps up. You know, like I watched her fight Amanda because it still was in February. So <laughs> that's my little rule is if it's in the same month, I can't watch her fights and stuff, you know. And that's why I posted her video on TikTok. It was before her fight. 
Um, but I watched her Amanda two fight, and it's like, you know, you're gonna sound biased. I I kind of went back and watched. I was like, I thought she kind of won a little bit, you know. Amanda was just throwing leg kicks, but the combos and stuff that Valentina was throwing was amazing. She was she's fast. She's a counter puncher. Her leg kicks were amazing. Um, Amanda did get those last two takedowns, but she had to struggle to get those takedowns. So when it comes to like Grasso, and that's you know Amanda's a big strong girl to be able to um to get her down like that. I don't know if Grasso's gonna be able to move her around like you were saying, Sky. She's a, her body frame's a little bit smaller, but like I always say, we shall see. We, we shall know. see. Mm. Yeah, so CJ's pleading the fifth on that one. He's straight down the middle. He's not gonna pick a side. Well, no, no I'm leaning towards Valentina. I'm picking Valentina, but okay. We are Mexico Peros if she wins. Shout out. We got another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> DJ Khaled. Uh, and then, of course, needs no introduction. Your boy, John Bones Jones versus Cyril Gone. Or as John keeps calling him, Cyril Gone. <laughs> he keeps calling him Cyril Gain. <laughs> He's just being petty. Uh, you know, the, the king is back, as they say. Mm -hmm. And... Back up at heavyweight. We've never seen him there. And he's taking on somebody who moves like him. Yeah. He's taking exactly. on somebody who's not going to just try to throw a haymaker to get you out of there. Like, he's going to be technical with you. Um, This is going to be an abs. Like I, like, I literally cannot wait for this fight to come on. But something in me is telling me, don't doubt John Jones. Like, I can't go against John Jones. I just cannot. And I'm not a fan. I do not like John Jones. But I, I respect him and I respect his craft. And I just feel like his wrestling and his tenacity and just his experience in general is mm. going to be too much. And he's just nasty. Like, when John Jones gets in there, he's a dog. Like, he's not in there, like, pitter-pattering with you. Like, he's in there to hurt you. In, in hurt you. Multiple ways. Like. You know, and Cyril, I just think he's a little bit too lax. I think he's a little bit inexperienced. And then I didn't like the comments about that he said about like not being training since the uh, since the oh, yeah. since the last fight. You know, I'm just like, oh, what do you mean? You like, sure, you could just be saying that, but like, I actually think that like that's actually what's happening with him. And um, does he have the potential to get it done? Sure, of course, everyone does, but I can't go against John. What you feel, Damien? Valid, valid <laughs> point. Um, all right. So the fact that John Jones is John Jones, right? We already have this perception of him and expectation. However, he is going up in weight. He's putting more weight on. We haven't seen this man in years, right? And he's going up against someone that's just as tall, who in the past we've seen that if somebody if he's fighting somebody that's his height or a little taller. He kind of has problems with him, right? Like, that's not, I'm not capping about that. Like, those were his toughest fights. Yep. So, to see him going up against Cyril Garn, who has the footwork, who has, who is not as flat footed as John, you guys are saying they, they kind of move the same. I, I disagree. I think Cyril Garn is lighter on his feet. He's going to be sticking and moving. And I'm sure that he's well aware that that takedown is probably going to be coming if he starts, you know, landing points like point fighting with john i feel like he's going to be trying to do and i i i can see john jones winning this as if if he just wrestles him if he wrestles him he's going to dog him he's going to dog walk him. but if cyril gone is able to stop the takedown stop the clinches from happening somehow and then just strike for strike with him i think he has the advantage honestly so i'm gonna uh it's a hard one. John Jones could easily just grapple him easily based off of the fight we saw with Francis. But I'm gonna go play devil's advocate. I'm gonna say Cyril Gar is gonna get it get it done by point fighting and, and staying away from John Jones. And he's gonna be the one that that puts the real one on there. You know what I mean? Give him oh. his real loss. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. Well, Jace ain't here, so he gonna be <laughs> mad at me because I honestly I've I I don't know. I've been going back and forth. I've been going teetering like 
because like I said, I like my predictions. I don't fucking do predictions. I don't. I honestly don't know who I'm rooting for. And like I said with Valentina, I love seeing Legacy. I kind of want to see Jones come back and win. And like you know, like I said, I'm on the fucking internet and people just be talking crazy. So I want to see him if can he come back and, and and win this and you know submit the goat status or whatever. You know, stepping up to the challenge at 55. But then I also look at Cyril Ghana. I'm like, damn man, I really like this guy as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's a big, like he could be my homie just speaking French and shit. Um, but you know, so if you want to get a little bit more technical, I've been watching Gone again. Um, so I watched him fight Volkov yesterday. Oh no. Yeah. What, what happened? No, I'm only saying oh no, because if y'all don't remember a couple podcasts ago, or maybe I don't even know if that was on podcast or if you and I were just talking, but you talked about what happened the last time when y'all watch people before they fight. <laughs> like don't <laughs> I bet hey yo Sky I'm fucking up cause I, I it's like 5149 for me for Jones you know what I'm saying yeah. just, just because I know him a lot longer I kind of grew mm -hmm. not grew up with him but like seen him a lot more he killed all the legends that I love so I'm like he was that dude he has a lot of bullshit going on with him so I'm slightly want to see him do you know better but I love Gone too but I was watching the Volkov fight, and he comes out, and he has this, he, he's light on his front foot. He's bouncing around. That's a wrestler's dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. John, John has that length. That's that single leg, push him up against a cage, dirty box him. And then last night, I watched Gon versus Francis, which I felt like, yes. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, Scott? I bet, like, my stream box was tripping. I was trying to watch him versus Biggie Boy. I probably had to watch him somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But Gon... Gon's amazing. He he moves like a middleweight. He strikes yeah, like yeah. a middleweight. Mo was like, man, his kicks to his bo people's bodies and his kicks to the uh, the knees to the body is amazing. He's in and out. Like honestly, I don't. Th we're we're in for a treat of the highest level of the biggest guys in 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 the sport. You know what I'm saying? Is like we're 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 in for an amazing fight. I ho I hope so. Hopefully, it's not like uh. And Ganu and uh, Derek Lewis, when they're just standing and looking oh. at a mirror, hopefully they go at it and put a show on for us. But if I'm going to lean, I'm probably going to lean a tiny bit for JJ. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny bit, just to see the legacy type of shit. You know? Yeah. And Gan will still have his chances. Well, we don't fucking know. Look what John did to Reyes. And look what happened to that man. So, right. Fuck. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Ended that man's career. One thing that I do yeah. want to point out that I haven't heard anyone like say, and they could be, and I just might not have heard them, but like, this is the first time that John Jones doesn't have the full Jackson, Jackson Wink with them, Jackson you Wink. know, because he's not with Jackson Wink. And if you remember what, um, and I love Anthony Smith, but he was definitely a hater this day when he was on that podcast mm -hmm. talking about, um, he's not that good. You know, he just listens to his coaches, blah, 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 blah. Well, now his coaches aren't going to be there, or I, I think maybe one of them will be there. I'm not sure who his team is going to be. You know, he's been spending a lot of time with Henry and um, and working with, like, different coaches down there. So this is going to be interesting to see, like, how he responds to a different coach because um, coaching does matter, like, mm -hmm. you know, and specifically, be, like, how Anthony was talking about how, like, he was, how John Jones like a robot, like, whatever his coach said, he did. You know what I mean? So without having that um, coach behind you telling you what to do, like that familiar voice, because it's one thing to be practicing and sparring with, you know, without that coach. But when you're like, you're really in the fire, like that fight against him versus Reyes, which I feel like he lost. You know what I mean? But like he had to really depend on his coach and depend on, you know, their advice to get him through that fire to really just let go. Um, so I think that'll be really interesting to see uh, what happens with that. And then also, if you guys haven't, check out UFC Breakdown. It's on YouTube. I think it's already out yet. I mean, if it's not out yet, it'll be out, like, tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday. Um, but Safe Saul breaks down both John Jones and Cyril Gaon and, like, just shows, like, how similar they are. Like, the same moves and stuff. Yeah. They throw a lot of the same stuff. They do a lot of the same things. Um, and this is just going to be, like, a technical delight. Like, this is yeah. much better. Like, although, you know, we want yeah. to see the spectacle of John Jones versus Nganu just because like John because Nganu has that one punch knockout power. 
But at the end of the day, like, this is the fight that, like, really will show you where John Jones is. Like, is his cardio able to keep up at the, with the weight on him? Is right. he going to be able to, you know, move as well, move as fast? Like, this is going to tell us a lot. Um, That's what I'm saying. Because there's three different variables he's dealing with. The coach, mm -hmm. the weight, and what was the other one? Oh, him being out for so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's three negative variables, in my opinion, that he's going to go up against a natural heavyweight serial guy who's actually been on his shit and been active and doing his thing. So, yeah. You know, we'll see, man. Like, I, I hope not everybody is just shooting serial gun down because I don't disrespect him like that. He might fuck around and shock the world. Well, it, could you imagine? That, you said something earlier that kind of hit with me, and I've been thinking. You know how I'd be like, "Damn, I, 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 I like Cyril Gone because he's a nice guy and shit." And we were talking about that earlier in the pod. Mm -hmm. But Jones, that type of dude, that he's a fucking dickhead. Let's just put it like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he will do anything <laughs> to go out and win. Yes. Do you think that kind of will come into play? How Gone is not his instincts. He don't have that Kobe shit in him to go out. I'm going to go out there and just, you know, go out there and, and try to kill you for this fight. John, that right. got that in him. You know what I'm saying? And that yes. experience is different. Yeah. yeah. You know, and we're how he did Leota. I know this is a whole different fucking weight class. And I know it was years ago. And I know this. But yeah. look at the instinct in his head, how he had this motherfucker in the choke. And just dropped him like he didn't give but, a fuck about him. Didn't. Look how he abused Shogun and just abused them and just left them out there. Like, so that's the kind of thing mentality plays into this kind of stuff as well. Gone to me seemed like a big ass goofball. And not saying that he can't go out yes. there and whoop ass right. as like that. But when yes. the heat gets on, will he be able to turn that shit on a, yeah. to be like, oh, it's time to go and whip some ass during there? And you know, we haven't seen him be, we haven't seen Gone be put in a situation. To where you have to get nasty. And like when I'm talking about nasty, I'm talking about if John Jones is on top of you, throwing them nasty elbows, elbows. that Yair Rodriguez was throwing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just doing stuff to make somebody uncomfortable. Like I can't remember who it was, but I seen somebody like they were um, in someone's guard on top position and they were just rubbing their elbow just on their face. You know what I mean? That's just I love nasty. That. I yeah, love like that kind that's of what shit. we're talking about. Like just being nasty, just being disrespectful because this is a fist fight. Um, we know that Gon can take a hit, though. We know that because Bam Bam sat him down. Bam no. Bam sat that man down, and how he woke up and just popped back up, I have no idea. We don't, like, Jones has taken a hit, but he hasn't gotten hit by a heavyweight. And we've seen no. Zero Gon, with accumulation, shut Bam Bam down. Like, just battered him. You know, is John going to be able to take those hits? Like, if Ooh. he really gets hit. I saw a video today of a different angle of Cyril Gaunt versus uh, Bam Bam, where he hit him with that hook that rocked him. It was mm -hmm. like from the sideline view. It was so beautiful. It had to be like the crispest UFC punch, like left hook to the yeah. chin ever. And Bam Bam took it. He was wobbly on his feet. Yeah. But it, you saw the, the sweat and the blood yeah. just. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at that again. I was like, Damn, bro, like, my man is actually pretty crispy, you know what I mean? Like, I can't, that, can't count him out. I can't yeah. count him out. And he's thick. Look at the boy. That, that man is thick. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Like, you know but that's also a thing, too, hurting. is that uh, I feel like both of those guys don't have the, that, who the fuck am I talking? They don't have the power to really, they don't really put people out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's, it's more accumulation. Yeah. I think it's because they're using more technique than it yeah. is. And like, I'm trying to one punch, one get you out yeah. of here and have a highlight knockout. It's yeah. more like, I'm going to hit you, you're going to feel it, but you're still going to be there, but you're going to wish you wasn't there. <laughs> right. So that's why I think the the fight is when people say, uh, is he going to get hit? Yeah, he's going to get hit. But I don't think he has that thing how people are talking about. Nagano is going to be a little bit more scary in there, but mm -hmm. this fight is going to be more of a... Uh, like Sky was saying, a more technical fight. It's going to be more back and forth fight. And I was talking to people on TikTok, you know, just giving people's. I can see a, a, a lot of different ways. Like I looked up and I seen John getting TKO'd around the third or fourth round. You know, he gets hit, he gets wobbled, he gets put up on the cage. And then Gon is just standing over, boom, boom, they stop the fight. Then I also seen a situation where 
gone. Like you were saying, uh, Jones is getting on him. It's raining shit down. He gives up his back from being like tired. Rear naked choke comes in. There's so many ways that both of these guys can end up winning and don't get it fucked up. Gone hits a couple subs on um a few of uh, of his wins earlier on in his yeah. uh, sure. career. So, yeah. you know, we're we're in for it. We're in for it. But I, yeah. I think I think the mentality is gonna be have to push in. Ah, I had a thing too. So a lot of people are saying, you know, Jones has been gone for so long. You mm-hmm. think any of that could play into any of his favors that he hasn't been taking damage for three years? As that, opposed but... to somebody as like, you know, Gon being in there. He didn't take no damage against Nganu, but you know, he got it in with Bam Bam. You know, every little fight takes a little piece out of you. Yeah, but I think I think being active kind of gives you the better hand more so because you're in that competitive atmosphere versus like sparring in your garage, hitting the bag in your garage. You know what I mean? Especially knowing that you in between coaches and gyms and everything, you know. I I I think about that too. And for some people it might it might play a favor. Like let's say Max Holloway, he stopped sparring for so long because he was saying it was a detriment to his joints and how he was feeling before before the the big night, right? But then you also see people and I, I don't have an I don't have uh, an example of someone, but I've seen it where they've been gone for so long they hop back in with the top level opponent and they just end up getting beat the hell up because it's not the same as when you mm-hmm. left. The competition has evolved and it is different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Cyril Gaon is a natural heavyweight and he's light on his feet. That's why I'm saying that if he does get beat the hell up by John Jones, it's going to be on the ground in the end of this. Because John Jones is a, is a mastermind in his jiu-jitsu and his wrestling. So, yeah, man, I, I, I'm not discrediting anything. But I think that Cyril Gaon, if it if he's able to negate the clinch and the takedowns, I feel like him being the more active and higher, you know, he, not only is he more active, but he's been up there with the highest competition as well. He's, he hasn't been fighting cans or not here, you know? So I, I give him a solid shot. Like how you were saying, uh, 51 49, I'm going to go 51 49, but in the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah I can yeah. dig it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going 51-49, uh, Jones. Yeah. And really, like, I'm kind of torn because a part of me does want the shakeup, right? I want to see Cyril Gaon win and get, like, that 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 love that he deserves, yeah. right? Because people yeah. will go crazy if he's the first person to oh. beat John Jones. Like, Yeah, that's right. another storyline. Like, and yep. second of all, you they you know they're going to run it back, and you're about to get crazy paid off of that. Um, but then at the same time, John Jones being champion is so good for the UFC. Um, him being active and fighting, yeah. like you. But the thing about that is, you know, the next fight is Stipe. I yeah. don't really see Stipe being no. that big of an issue as Cyril Gane is. And like, who's next after no. that? Because Ngannou's not there. It's like what Curtis Blaze. Like, do we really want to see? Like, that's not like at heavyweight. Like. There's those big fights that you want to see Jones in. But then after that, it's just like, you know, is he going to sell off into the sunset after two, three fights? It's not like he's going to be around. Yeah, it's not like he's going to be around for his, uh, he just signed a new eight fight contract. It's not like he's going to be around for all those fights. So, no, (laughs) it's going to be interesting. But UFC 285 is this weekend. And I'm going to be watching from top to bottom. I mean, I always do, but definitely going to be watching from top to bottom. Uh, Let's just run down who we got real fast. So Ooh. CJ and I are going with John Jones. Damien's going with Cyril. All of us are going with Valentina Shevchenko. Um, I'm going with Hop- I'm going with uh Shafkot. And <laughs> you two say you guys are going with a uh, G off, right? Yeah, I, I want G off to win. All right, and then uh, who do we say for? Oh, Turner all of us are going with uh with uh Turner, right? Are uh, you picking Turner too? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm um, going Bo Nickel. Damien and I are going Bo Nickel, and uh, CJ's yeah. going Jamie Pickett. 
Hey, and if y'all in that, y'all already know how my my little uh, what's that called? My trend looks like. So it is what it is, baby. We got yeah. it. It's beautiful. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> both Fact. my side, hey, both my sides. I roll with that. So <laughs> facts, facts. Uh, after the fights, we're definitely gonna be back. Uh, you might even catch CJ and I on TikTok going at it, uh, going over the results and everything that's going on. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for stopping by for another podcast. We will definitely be back next week to go over the results. And uh, hopefully Jace will be here because I asked him, I talked to him earlier. I asked him, did you want to put your bet? Did you want to put your, who did you want to say is going to win? He's like, oh, I've got some time. I'll wait. Really? He's just dodging because if you recall, several weeks ago, he said Cyril by TKO and it wasn't mm. even going to be close. I will be running that video back. And so that is now his permanent, whether he wanted to change it or not, that's now his that's permanent. Um, <laughs> Watch that happen. Hey, what yeah. I tell you, if you, if you <laughs> no call, no show, we going to pick for you, bro. Period. Period. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Before we go, make sure that you click the link in the bio and drop your MMA hot takes, drop your MMA questions, and we will definitely get to them. But not on this episode because we had to get it in 285. But either way, scrap and roll. We are out. Peace.